Hi guys, this is Jimmy from Case Group here and in this short video I want to talk about some of the new features that we added to the latest service pack of Vrayful Max. As you can see I have opened my scene and in this scene there is a character that is having a really bad hair day. Uh, if we take a deeper look into this uh, setting, into the, this hair here, you'll see that it's actually created using the Ornatrix uh, plugin. So the first new thing is that we can actually uh, use V-Ray and render this out. Now obviously, uh, if I just hit render, you will be able to see that we are not able to render it. And the reason for this is that uh, if I want to render hair created with Ornatrix, I need to select the hair here, go to the modifier list and uh, find the V-Ray Ornatrix mode. Now once I add this, uh, things will change and uh, we should be able to see uh, a shader in a second, uh, a rendering in a second. And you'll see that we're using the light cache right now and there's a reason for that. I'm going to explain this. So uh, the best way to render here with V-Ray is to use brute force when you want to have GI, is to use brute force for primary engine and the light cache for secondary engine. And in the light cache options you're going to use the use retrace threshold checkbox. Uh, this way uh, you'll get the best uh, mixture of uh, high quality and uh, render times that you can uh, when you're using V-Ray. So let me just bring out the render settings and show you this checkbox. Here in the indirect illumination I'm going to switch to brute force sec for primary secondary light cache. In the light cache I'm going to say that I want to use this retrace threshold here. Okay, so this is our rendering and obviously we're using some kind of a shader. Uh, and this shader is the new uh, addition that we added to um, the service pack. It is called a V-Ray Hair Material. Um, so let's take a look at the shader. So this is the shader that I'm using. And um, the first thing that I want to point out is that it's not that um, complex. It's actually very simple. But uh, if you don't want to uh, go ahead and uh, change all the different settings, you can actually go in the general parameters and you'll see that we have... Uh, a bunch of different presets. So I can just uh, select a preset, for example, I'll switch to Red Shiny and uh, hit Render and uh, I'll have a different type of hair here. Uh, this is very uh, useful if you just um, j j don't want to meddle with the shader and uh, try to create your own materials. And it's also very good if you're not uh, really comfortable with changing all the settings. We have this overall multiplier which actually if I uh, change it to something else, to if I put give it a color, I'll be able to multiply all the colors here with this overall multiplier and change the entire look of the shader. So this is how a red shiny looks. And let's just try to go blonde shiny and uh, give it a very green color here. So right now uh, I should get a very green um, shiny hair. And let's give it a second and we'll see. Now once again this will be very useful for you, especially if you have created a shader and then you just want to tint the color, you don't need to change a bunch of different parameters. You can just uh, use the overall multiplier and you'll see that right away we're changing the whole uh, feeling of the shader and the way it looks. So it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Now um, I'm going to stop this rendering and uh, just uh, try and play around with the shader. Now in order to understand the settings I'm going to get a new uh, very hair material and it's going to be very black right now everything is going to be black and assign it to the object here so let me first remove all the speculars all the transmission colors and make sure that everything is just black okay so you see that we have uh, several layers we have diffuse primary specular secondary specular and transmission and the diffuse is very straightforward it actually controls uh, the color of our uh, strands of the hair. And uh, this is going to be useful if you want to create uh, uh, hair that is not shiny, that is actually very um, blank and, uh, and uh, doesn't have any reflection on top of it. For example, if you want to create things like carpets or uh, something that's created from wool, uh, or ba ba basically uh, shaders that are matted. And uh, on top of this, uh, diffuse I can actually start adding some uh, speculars and uh, you see that I have the primary specular so if I increase it to white we should add a bunch of uh, specular reflections on top of this material. Now while this is rendering I want to point out that all of these layers have this amount so we have diffuse amount, primary, 
specular amount, secondary specular amount, transmission amount. The reason for this is that we actually give you opportunity to uh, decide how you want all these things to be blended and how you want the different layers to, uh, how much contribution each layer is going to have to the final result. Okay, so we see that uh, we really added a lot of reflections here and those reflections can actually uh, be glossy or clear. So if I want to create more uh, blurry reflections that are not going to be so shiny, but instead it will be more spread out and uh, not so sharp. I'm going to decrease the glossiness to 0 0.7, for example. And uh, this will, of course, slow down the rendering just a little bit, and it will create this uh, very uh, still reflective, but um, not so... S the hair is still reflective, but the reflections are not so... Um, so shiny and sharp. And if I want to have really, really shiny reflections, I'm going to go and set this to 0 0.98, for example. And now I'll have almost crystal clear reflections. So uh, the reflections will be still glossy and they will be shiny, but uh, they will be sh much sharper and I'll get this uh, feeling of a uh, wet hair or hair that is covered with something uh, oily or sticky or something like that. As you can see uh, the result here. So, uh, this is the primary specular and to have a secondary specular and the first thing that you'll notice is that uh, the there is this checkbox that says lock to transmission the reason we have this one is because uh, the secondary specular uh, actually is coming from a ray that is uh, has entered the hair strand and is reflected from the inside of the hair and uh, the internal color of the hair is controlled through this transmission so what we want to do is actually make sure that uh, the transmission color here is a little bit brighter than the secondary specular, which is going to be uh, the the accurate, uh, the physically accurate thing to do. So, uh, of course, you can um, unlock this checkbox and put the different colors uh, as you want to here and create really strange sh uh, shaders. But if you want to ha your hair to have this transparency and the secondary specular to be physically correct, you would usually keep this uh, transmission here locked. So as you can see, uh, when I added a little bit of transmission, we also shifted the whole thing towards uh, the blue uh, color and uh, we get a completely different result here. Uh, the only thing that uh, you can change while this is uh, checked is you can actually adjust the secondary glossiness of this uh, transmission color. Now to talk about the transmission, I really uh, prefer to use one of the presets and I'm going to switch back to the blonde shiny one because basically uh, it's most visible here. Now, the transmission is going to control how uh, transparent the hair strands are. And uh, the best uh, way to describe this is if you imagine uh, a picture of somebody with a long hair and there is a bright light behind them, you'll see that towards the end of the hair where it's very thin, uh, the hair actually uh, transmits light. And in my case, this is most visible over here where I get this uh, bright, bright, shiny hair. And this is because actually the light is coming from this uh, sphere over here. So uh, that's the transmission cover. Uh, a thing about the transmission cover is that uh, it has uh, different uh, glossiness parameters. You can have one glossiness along the length of the um, strands of the hair strands and a different glossiness uh, across the strands. So um, changing those will have a very minor effect that's not going to be visible straight away. So I'm going to uh, use this uh, history here and let's remove the previously saved ones. So this is uh, uh, the rendering right now that I had and I'm just going to save it and then I'm going to change the glossiness width, uh, the transmission glossiness width and uh, also the glossiness length. So I'm going to switch places of the two basically and hit render again. And the difference will be uh, very small, it will be visible but sometimes you may need this to um, kind of stretch the speculars uh, along the your characters or their uh, their hair. So let's wait for the rendering to complete and uh, we'll see the result. Okay, so that's the part that I needed. Let's stop the rendering and save this as well. And I'm going to set this to A, set this to B. And you'll be able to see that actually uh, here where the hair is transparent I'm able to uh, to see the difference in the trans in the transmission okay 
you can see the speculars are really uh, stretched different in the two images. Okay, now uh, the last thing I want to show you here is uh, I'm just going to create a brand new shader once again, a hair material, and uh, assign it to my object here. And obviously the shader is very, very flexible. As you saw, we can do a bunch of different things, different uh, specular levels and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, we actually added a texture that uh, can allow you to even to have even more flexibility when rendering uh, and shading your ha your hair characters. So I'm going to go to the uh, maps section and uh, in the diffuse slot, I'm going to click on the none button and have this V-Ray hair info texture. So this actually allows us to shade uh, our hair based, for example, on the points position along the strand or we can, for example, randomize the colors uh, by the strength index and so on and so forth. So in my case, I'm just going to use the position along strength output, which will make me give me uh, the ability to have uh, one color at the beginning of the strength and a completely different color towards the end of the strength. And I can use this bias uh, option here to control how much of each color is seen. So for example, if I want to be the, the color to shift just towards the beginning of the uh, of the hair, I can the root of the hair. I can increase the bias, and uh, if I want it the other way around, I can decrease it. So let's hit render, and we will be able to see the difference uh, very easily right now. So I can see what happens is that uh, we have this gradient basically going from red to blue, and it's uh, very uh, uniform. The transition is uniform. And I can uh, change this transition by changing this bias here. So for example, if I increase it, uh, the gradient will shift towards uh, one of the two colors. So as you can see, uh, right now we have more of the blue and less of the red. And if I decrease the bias, I'll have more of the red and uh, less of the blue. And of course, this texture can be connected to any uh, of the parameters that that we have in the hair material. So for example, I can have uh, different uh, specular colors, different transmission colors based on the uh, uh, position of the point. So we can have hair that is more transparent here and less transparent in the beginning or at the root of the hair. So we can have a hair that is more shiny at the roots and less shiny towards the end. So you can actually have a lot of control over the way your hair is going to look uh, in the final rendering. So this pretty much uh, completes everything I had to say. Uh, I thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.